Hey, welcome back to Black Lab Garage. Today, we're doing something special. We're going to port a 460 Ford cylinder head. Come on, let's get into it. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the Ford 460 engine. To me, the 460 was one of the greatest engines Ford ever built. I mean, they were first introduced in, let's see, 1968. And they built the last ones in 1997, I believe. So that's a pretty long run for an engine. And outside of them adding the fuel injection to them in 87, they went relatively unchanged. The biggest drawbacks on a 460, um, from 73 on especially, is lack of compression, lack of flow on the exhaust side, and the retarded cam timing. Because if you find a 68 to like 71, 460, I mean for a bone stock motor, they've got some scary torque and I mean they run good. But they also had 11 to 1 compression. You're not going to find any pump gas to run them on today. I've literally seen them ran and get them good and hot, pull spark plug wires off of them, and crank it back over and they'd try to run like a diesel. Okay. In 73, Ford come out with, everybody knows them as the D3 cylinder head. Now, the combustion chamber is a hundred thousandths deeper, which moves the valves up, which pinch the uh, especially the exhaust port off they do not breathe well on the exhaust side and that's why we're making this video today also they put really big dish pistons in them in uh, the 70s like Grand Canyon sized dishes in them I mean they had like seven and a half to eight to one the compression sucked that's why they were so hard on fuel in the 70s that and to try to pass emissions Ford retarded the camshaft eight degrees by the lower timing sprocket. If you ever look at it, look where the dot is and then look where the keyway is. Or, see, yeah, they'll be off. Um, easy trick to that is get either a 19, you know, 70, just get you a time set for a 1970, 71, 429. Problem solved, straight up timing. Or get a double roller timing set for the fuel injected 460s because they used straight up timing and had double roller timing sets from the factory. Problem solved. There are plenty of pistons available. Uh, UEM makes a hypernutectic flat top form, raise the compression up. Um, the late fuel injected uh, 460s, 88, had almost a flat top in them, had just a very shallow dish, and then in 93, they improved the uh, 460 fuel injected head, went to a bigger intake valve and revised the ports a little more. And they had a little bigger dish in them, but not nothing like what they had in the 70s. But the last fuel injected 460 piston, even though it had a little bigger dish, also had a higher compression height. So that made up even for having the bigger dish. Um, with the set of the later model D3 heads and a flat top piston, you're gonna be, you know, nine to nine and a half to one that's plenty for a, a truck 460 because what, what we're doing today we're building a truck 460 okay i'm not showing you how to port for a drag car i'm just showing you what i do for the truck engines okay and it, it's always worked well but straight up timing raise compression make them breathe on the exhaust you'd be surprised how much power they make and how good a fuel economy they get. So, let me show you the secret to the heads. All right, see that hole right there and that big hump? That's the uh, Thermactor hole. It actually runs all the way the length of the cylinder head on the exhaust side and was for the air injection, you know, to help pass emissions. 
So you want to plug these off. And then we're going to whittle this down. So let me show you how to plug it off. First thing, get a drill. Okay, this is a 9 30 seconds drill bit. Now get a 5 16 tap and I'm just being real easy and using a drill. But you can do it by hand if you want. Back it out every once in a while, get your metal chips out. Scare me for me, I thought I broke the tap. We didn't though, we're all right. All right. Now what I do is get a bolt and you see I've cut a notch in it and get our old faithful high temperature Loctite. Make sure it's high temp. Because it's going in the exhaust side, you know. So. I may have cut, I may have notched that up too high. And I did. Sorry, right, I will cut a notch in a little lower. Be okay. No big deal. Just gotta hurry for the Loctite sets up. Run it down. Yeah. There it goes. Snaps off. That's what I want. Now I want to take a second here and talk about safety before we get started while porting. Make sure you wear safety glasses because you don't want a piece of metal stuck in your eye from this. Get you some, you know, gloves to wear because I don't like having metal chips stuck in my hands either. And most importantly, always have a respirator. Respirator. You ready? Come on. All right. Hopefully, I can do this. I want to try to. I'll just get the camera. We're wanting to knock this down. Some say to make it into a vein, some say eliminate it completely. I'm going to leave that up to you. But we want to knock this back on each side, open it up around through there, and whittle away down here, and get the short turn radius here. But, like the here, the floor, there's no point doing anything to it. I've seen people, will, listen, there is nothing to be gained on the floor. The short turn radius right here, yes. The floor, no. Heat rises. And this head's upside down, so you want to work up here. Now, be careful back here in this corner because right in there, it gets thin. You go too deep, and you're going to hit water. So. Now we're working on narrowing the... Uh, valve got down and bringing this to a vein and then also working on the short side radius while we're in here
whatever you do, make sure you don't hit the seat, or then you'll be having to go get a valve job and get the seats recut. Now get, uh, I think these are 40 grit sand and rolls, and start smoothing everything out, and then go back and look at it and see what if you need to cut some more, you know, what you need to do. Don't get the sand and rolls and stuff from Harbor Freight. They're not even worth driving home with. I mean, they, they just suck. Get some decent sand and rolls. I've still got a little bit more to do to this this one here but it's starting to get dark on me out here so I guess I'm gonna cut it off here but just to put a little light on it but there's about what you want to see you know like I said that's now shaped into a vein we've raised the top of it so now all we need to do is back cut the valves and get the valves in and we'll be ready to put a head on here and it'll breathe good uh, I will go ahead and tell you you're doing this at your own risk because not every head casting is going to be the same some are thinner than others and there's core shift and everything else so do this at your own risk but I mean it's worth it it, it really really makes a difference in a 460 one thing I hadn't showed you is I like to take one of the sand and rolls and I like to go around the edge of the combustion chamber and I like to sand a little bit in the combustion chamber. Just make sure there's no hot spots that'll cause it to spark knock. So I mean, just go around it very lightly. <laughs> and then, uh, that's why I've got these two old valves in here to protect the valve seats. I'm going to show you one completed but we go from this to this that's quite a big difference on the exhaust now let me flip it over and I'll show you the intake on the intake side all I done was gasket matched it and I don't know if you can see I narrowed down the uh, valve guide just a little bit. Let me try to flip it back. Man, these heads are heavy. So you can, you can see where I wheeled it down a little bit and then I smoothed the bowl. You know, because there's always a big ridge right here. And that's pretty much all I've done. I don't do a lot on the intake side on the heads for a truck simply because we want to keep the velocity up. I know some of you out there right now saying, well, I could have put Super Cobra Jet valves and blah, 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 blah. Yes, you could. And if I was doing a car head, I would do that. But in a truck, we're not going to be turning enough RPMs to take advantage of it. Um, I mean, I'm going to be riding a 600, maybe 650 size carburetor. That's it. So there's really no point in hogging the intake ports out, putting bigger intake valves and stuff in it, because I'm trying to keep the velocity up. Because the RPMs are going to stay, you know, below 5,000. It's the exhaust that needs the most work on these. So I hope I hope this helps some of you. Be sure and like and subscribe, because it takes just as long to like something and subscribe as it does to not like it and not subscribe. <laughs> but me and the pups really appreciate all of you. Uh, can't believe how much. How many subscribers I've gotten in just a year. But be sure and stay tuned because I've got more coming. Now, as a matter of fact, the next video will be how to back cut the valves and 
pipe them in and put them together. See you.